Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. After assembling the band of warriors from the last film, Korra and her friends return back to her village to fight against the Imperiums for their land and their grain. Or something like that. So when it comes to the first Rebel Moon Part 1, I didn't mind it. I enjoyed the sci-fi aspects of it. I didn't really get attached to the characters. But overall, I didn't think it was the worst thing Snyder's ever done. And I didn't think it was the worst thing to watch. But I did say in that review when I gave it a weak recommend that we'll see how that holds up once Part 2 comes out. So now Part 2 has come out and... I didn't hate it. There's a lot of hatred over this movie. A lot of outrage. But for me personally, didn't hate the movie. Doesn't mean I liked it either. Rebel Moon Part 2 is definitely a more contained film than its predecessor. Part 1 was definitely the setup for these characters and this world. Now we just have the battle. For like an hour and a half, we watch the two sides fight as they try to defend the village. And it all just takes place in the one location. The people of the village fighting the Imperiums on the village land. And the action in this, it was fine. I enjoyed it. But... That's kind of all this movie has going for it, is colorful, beautiful visual action sequences. There's really nothing else that this movie offers. Because once again, when it comes to the characters here, Snyder doesn't really give them anything for us to latch onto. There's no hook for these characters, and when it comes to the village fighting for the village... I was not invested in that at all. When it comes to really fleshing out the details of this world, Snyder doesn't really seem that focused or like he cares much about establishing that. So yeah, the visuals of the action that, again, are the 90% of this movie's runtime, they look cool, they're shot well, but there's nothing behind them. There's no substance to it. It all just comes across as empty visual noise. And I just kind of got numb to it. And when all you're watching is mindless action for an hour and a half, I got really bored. Now, it's not that he doesn't attempt to do some things with our characters. It's just his attempts are lackluster, poor, and lazy. There is literally a scene in this movie where the characters sit down at a table, and one by one, they tell their backstory aided with visuals and exposition. And by doing so, Snyder is trying to manipulate you into caring about their situations, but it's such little information with their backstory. It's only like a little snapshot into their tragedies. It's not deep enough for me to care about anyone in this movie. Even when it comes to the villain of the last film that I actually really enjoyed the performance of, the noble, he's actually kind of toned down in this movie. The whole thing with his death in part one really doesn't come into play that much in part two. There's really no reason why he had to be dead at the last one. He could have just been missing MIA and then just reappears in this movie. There was nothing narratively that his death really affected for part two. And with that, the conflict that's in here with Korra and the noble, it just doesn't really have any emotional investment for me. I don't really care who comes out the victor. In fact, Korra in this movie, I thought she was a worse character here than she was in part one. She makes some really stupid decisions throughout this movie that don't really seem justified and don't feel like the same decisions that this character from part one would have been making. It almost makes her feel like a completely different character from who she was in part one. If you even remember her character from part one. By the way, she's the lead. And they easily could have made this movie like an hour and 45 minutes. If they had shaved like 15 minutes off of this movie. Because this movie must have the Guinness Book of World Records for the most slow motion used in a movie. Now, Zack Snyder, he loves his slow motion. As If you watch Zack Snyder movies, if you're a Zack Snyder fan, you know he loves his slow motion. I thought he overused it in part one. I was not prepared for the slow motion in part two. It really drags the pacing of this movie there are numerous shots of people just picking grain in a field in slow motion i don't know if Zack snyder was just using that to try to immerse you into how boring it is to pick grain in a field but if it was it worked i was so bored on top of that, in the action sequences when he uses the slow motion, sometimes it's used well and it looks cool. Other times, it just feels kind of pointless to be there. Like, why do you have to slow this particular shot down? And in part one, we got to explore more of the science fiction world. In this movie, we, like I said, it's contained. We're stuck in this one location for pretty much the whole movie. It makes it feel really small. It makes it lose that scale that the first part had. And it honestly makes it start to feel more like a TV movie than the part one did overall the problems that i had with part one still remain here and in fact they're kind of amplified in this one i didn't care about the characters i didn't care about the conflict and when the conflict is the majority of your movie it just became so 
dull and boring and yeah the action looked cool but it was so surface level there was nothing behind it there was nothing more underneath it did i hate watching rebel moon part two no but when you pair it up with part one because Zack snyder clearly wants us to be seen as a four hour epic movie I don't think the journey was satisfying. I said at the end of part one, I was curious to see where they were going to go with part two. At the end of part two, they established they have an idea for part three. I don't care to see it. It's clear that with this, it's going to be Zack Snyder's all visuals, no substance type movies. And besides some entertaining, mindless action, I don't think they have much to offer. So I'm actually going to do something I've never done on the channel. And I'm going to retrospectively go back to Rebel Moon part one and part two and collectively say I don't recommend them it, they are weak not recommends they have some visual flair they have some interesting visuals but for the most part the story and the characters and everything around it is just a little bit too shallow for me to recommend you wasting your time on Anyway, guys, those are all my thoughts and opinions about this movie. Look, I don't hate it. I'm not going to be outraged about Rebel Moon Part 2, but it definitely isn't that great of a movie. But what did you guys think of Rebel Moon Part 2? Are you outraged by it? Do you hate it? Comment down below. Let me know all your thoughts and opinions about that, guys. And if you're new here and you haven't heard, we have a goal on this channel. We want to hit 4,000 subscribers. If you like talking movies, we do that all the time on this channel. We would love to have you join us and be a part of the community. Consider hitting that subscribe button before you make your way out. As always, guys, thank you so much for hearing me out, and I hope to talk to you guys again real soon.